large corporations are military industrial complex. military industrial complex is a major issue so i have a term for that i call it corporate communism corporate communism destroys small businesses in america and i have a very good example from my district they destroy the small businesses and the corporations gain all the control and they can't be defeated and they do the bidding of the government like they're doing biden's saying oh the government's not going to mandate vaccines but the big corporations are doing it. Corporate communism, they're putting the policy in place through their businesses, on their employees, and on their customers, like we've seen with the well, airlines. And- to drive too. Look at you. After you just said that, you think I'm drunk. Fuck you, Ted Wheeler. I've been sober for a year. Maybe you should try it, especially if you're going to keep driving. How you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. So, 
this is a reaction video. It looks like Antifa's back in the news again. No real big surprise if you've actually been following them. I know a lot of people are like, what happened to them? I thought they'd been disbanded and they're done with. Um, not quite so. If you're on the West Coast, the East Coast, um, if you're in Detroit, basically if you're in a liberal city, Democratic ran city, uh, they're very much still active. Um, this time they attacked a Christian function. And there's a lot of talk about them using grenades. But let me clarify. What they actually used was uh, smoke grenades and tear gas grenades. And they tilted them in the direction of children. That's my number one issue. And my number two issue is, once again, they attacked the pastor, the youth pastor, along with women. They took the equipment. They threw it into the river, from what reports are saying. And that basically ruined it. And then they took um, what they could along with it as they walked away, you know, using their tear gas and everything. So people have asked, why do they attack uh, Christians so much? And it's not that much, it's not that difficult of an answer, really. The reason why they attack Christians Groups like Antifa, BLM, and other extremist groups, such as Muslim extremist groups, and etc., is because they view Christians as weak, submissive type of men and women. They believe Jesus to be a weak and submissive type of God. And the idea of anybody submitting themselves to a God like that is beyond most people. So, because of the common misconceptions about Christianity and Judaism, they often attack Jews and Christians, believing that they don't have a right to attack them based on their beliefs. But what they don't understand is, biblically speaking, a Christian does have their right to both defend themselves, defend their families, defend their houses, defend their lands, and defend their kingdoms. That's actually in the Bible. So, you can't really go into it like that, but that's what they do. That's the, that's the real answer to why they attack them so often. Because they believe that if they talk back to them or if they get loud to them, then they're a bigot and they're not truly a Christian because they're talking back to them and they're not submissive to them. They're not like, oh, okay, whatever you say, guy, whatever you say. Um, so whenever you actually talk back to them and go, no, you're wrong. I'm going to stand my beliefs. I'm going to, no, call you out. Then they're like, oh, you're not a true Christian. Well, actually, if you read your Bible, then you would find out they're actually wrong once again. But there's no real big surprise there because both within the Democratic Party and those terrorist groups such as Antifa, BLM, and etc. And FACC, the list goes on and on. It really does. Um, they often twist ideology to fit their narrative. I mean, really, if you look at it, isn't that what it really is all about anyways? Um, people trying to get control of other people based on the fact that they believe they can't fight back or they're stupid or whatever. There's more of them. So... <clears throat> They're going to, it's all basically designed to twist to whatever narrative they want. And that's what we're seeing is people basically lashing out going, no, this is what I want. And this is what it is. And trying to force you, no matter what your viewpoint is, no matter how educated you may be, no matter where you're coming from or what background you come from or what situations in life you come from, they're trying to tell you you're wrong and you got to accept their viewpoint because if you don't, then you're a bigot. Well, they're actually the ones that are bigot, and it's actually designed Marxist 101 socialism. Like I've always said, on this show for like basically the past year since all this chaos like really hit the mainstream news, and I've talked about it before then, but I switched gears and more political because of the push for socialism, and that's what we're seeing. And I keep saying it over and over and over again, and people, there's a lot of people that I believe they just flat out don't want to admit to themselves that's what it is. They don't want to admit that the socialists have infiltrated our American system 
and they're actually drafting bills trying to fit their narrative. They don't want to admit that to themselves yet. So it's easier for them to say that they're just retarded and this and that. But the truth is, they're the ones that's funding all this. Like the whistleblowers, damn, we got bit by something earlier. Um, but anyways, the whistleblowers actually said, if you want to find out about the funding for BLM and Antifa and other groups, start with the teacher unions. And that really didn't surprise me because if you look at the arrest records, you will see that you've seen a lot of nurses, social workers, school counselors, uh, psychologists, uh, lawyers, basically civil servant type of normally quote unquote liberal type of position jobs. They were all members of these groups. So it's not surprising. They really did fund it. I mean, if you really look at it, let's really backtrack on it. They want to talk about the six and they want you to be mad and they're using that to cause division, both within people's families on the holidays. Just wait, just wait for this Christmas. I'm telling you, just wait. If we, if something doesn't happen, just wait for what they're going to do. Um, they're going to, they're trying to cause this mass division of hostility. Um, you know what I mean? But really, why aren't they focused on the past four years of domestic terrorism? And I know, I know. It's like a broken record. Everybody says it. It's like, come on, man. It's the same song. Everybody's heard it. But really, it's really getting worse than that. I mean, just recently, they had um, the elder gentleman. He was a, I guess he had a Star Wars, uh, either comic book store or Star Wars memorabilia store or something like that. And he made a joke and used Dr. Seuss reference. And wouldn't you know it? A city council member who is, guess what, a member of Antifa and trans shows up and basically gathers a hostile mob outside, which you got to ask yourself, why is it that every single time these Democrats show up, guess who else shows up? It's because it's a funded movement. And I know everybody out there is pushing the George Soros angle. It's George Soros. It's George Soros. It's really all George Soros. Get over George Soros, okay? George Soros is ancient, first off. And he, and if he is involved in it, he's just a small piece of the freaking chessboard, man. These people, you're talking... Let me, let me tell you this. In the 1940s, if YouTube hasn't already taken it off, um, you could actually find a clip of the Rothschilds uh, Sr. back way back in the day in the beginning of World War II. And he was coming out of a function and he was asked by reporters, are you worried about a potential World War II? And if so, what I mean, like basically trying to ask him about the fate of Britain. Well, he laughed and said, of course not, because whoever controls the uh, whoever controls the bank controls England. Smiled and got in the car. So you're dealing with wealthy families trying to push their agenda. And that agenda is a global reset agenda. And it's not the first person. Biden is not the first person to do it. And Biden is a fall guy. You want to be, he is, he's a fall guy. Harris too. She's a fall girl. That's basically what they're there for. They're just trying to get these uh, bills pushed. You know, I find it interesting Obama recently was in the news again for his 60th bash. And what's interesting to me about this bash is there's a tweet going from one of these uh, celebrities. I don't know exactly who, because I didn't care at the time, but I did post the article. I can't remember the person, their name, but they said, I just got done smoking with the forever President Obama and forever First Lady Michelle Obama uh, smoking a blunt with them. And if you look at pictures of and videos that have surfaced of this function, they're all unmasked and just having a grand old time, right? Smiling and laughing. Well, this is how socialism works. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. The media that's covering for them, New York Times, and um, I think the Washington Post or somebody else said, it's okay 
because uh, uh, they're more intelligent, basically. They're more intelligent than conservatives, so it's okay for them to do that. Um, do I need to say more? I mean, come on now. You guys are playing yourself. They want your children to be masked, but it's their children and themselves are just carrying on life without, without them. And they have been since the start. Don't forget, Pelosi turned her back on her district whenever she got her hair done. And then try to sue, or not sue, but came after the salon owner, whatever she came forward on the news. I mean, so this isn't an isolated incident. That's why I bring it up. And let's bring up Rashida while we're at it, because Rashida was in the news once again, doing the exact same thing Obama did at a function with her husband, laughing and smiling without wearing a mask along with every single body else. But yet they're telling you you got to mask up again, even if you got your vaccine, even if you got the vaccine, you got to max up again, uh, mask up again because of the Delta variant. And really, a lot of health officials have actually came forward on this one. COVID, they didn't. But on the Delta, they're starting to come forward and being like, eh, come on now. So you got to ask yourself, is it a control tactic? And if so, why it, would it be a control tactic? See, Lenin himself once said, if you could control the media and you control the radio, because they didn't have video really back then at, at the time he said this. He had, they had newspapers, books, um, and the radio. Then you could control the narrative and you can and you can push fear campaigns and the people will buy it and then they will slowly turn on their neighbors family and co-workers for the state you know it's kind of interesting because that's what you're seeing even if, even though people got their vaccine i gotta i gotta say to me and i said it since the start of it this isn't anything else other than a big political move Okay, and it's really about your loyalty. A lot of people feel like if you're not wearing a mask, you're loyal to Trump. And if you are wearing a mask, then you're loyal to Biden. And really, there's people out there that legit believe in this thing, and there's people out there that legit don't believe in it. And then there's people that are loyal to whoever they're doing it. But you can't lump them all together. But see, in socialism, that's what they like to do. See, in socialism, the rich, the politicians and the rich people, and normally the top law enforcement people, they do whatever the hell they want to do. But yet, they enforce all these ridiculous rules on the citizens that don't apply for them. They got money. And that's what the socialists really want, is money. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to do it. It don't matter how many people they kill. It doesn't matter how many people have to be sacrificed in their eyes. To them, it's just a number. And to them, numbers is all that matters. And I think that's why they're pushing the CRT thing so hard. You know, and CRT is back. Critical race theory is socialism and Marxism 101. That's the reason why you're seeing so many people in the military worried right now. Because they did have a lot of people dropping out of the military due to the CRT push. Literally stating, I didn't sign up to the military to become a communist and to enforce communist rules. Now, you have military dependents on Twitter, like the Twitter groups that are uh, for military dependents and spouses and stuff, literally saying that their spouses are petrified because in the military, if you disobey an order, then that is like big time, uh, both dishonorable discharge, uh, potential prison time, and worse. So, when you sign up, you sign basically your butt belongs to the government and they do give you experimental vaccines and things and you just take it but this one this one's different and yet still they're trying to force it on them so a lot of people are speaking out on it and a lot of people are getting tired of it critical race theory enforces the fact that every single person is inherently racist uh well that is except for african americans and other nationalities and religions. It's just Christians and white people. It, it, you know, it's really funny because it really does resemble 
the ideology material that was pushed in pre-Soviet times along with Hitler and the brown shirt time. And people ask me all the time uh, about Antifa, and I quit talking about them a long time ago, but this time, like I said, they're attacking Christians, and I got to say something about it just because it's wrong in my eyes, and I'm going to. Um, so Antifa, if you want a good example of them to go by doing research, um, the original Antifa actually was a good thing. I've said that before. The original Antifa that fought against the Nazis was a good thing. This, this is a group, normally of Jews, by the way. Ha ha ha. But yeah, of Jews and other local people, that gypsies and etc. that banded together in small group details of like six people that would shoot and take on whole platoons of Nazis. Uh, that's not something these little uh, wannabe rebellious people our anarchists are doing you know what i mean in fact they're actually fighting for the fascists see the fascists are the ones that want the global reset and the global reset agenda point check 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 and point check antifa is always there to enforce it now the reason for that is their funded movement by the democratic party to cause chaos and really, it's not that hard to understand because if you know history, that's what the Soviet uh, groups did. I forget their color shirts, but I do know in Germany, it was the brown shirts. The brown shirts, before Hitler got power, would go out and cause controversy at, um, you know, like every single election, every single uh, event, all of that stuff. And they would break glass, uh, beat up people, cause chaos, light buildings on fire. Very much the same tactics that you're seeing right now, actually, uh, being played out. And that's what they did until they got power. And they later became, uh, you know, officials because they were loyal to the state. Uh, part of their tactics with the scare campaigning that they would do in socialists and dictatorships is they would do a scare campaign. And they would make the neighbors uh, basically snitch on their co-workers and enforce basically a, a snitch line. And once the person did it, did it so many times, they became, uh, they basically got an awarded for being a loyalist to the state that they served. Um, and it sounds very much like the stuff that you're hearing the uh, extremists for coming out of D.C. wanting to do. Uh, along with Biden and Harris. It sounds very much similar to that tactic. If you actually really do your research on it, you'll see what I'm saying. Um, it's not that hard to, it's not that hard to figure out, honestly, for real. Uh, hold on one minute. So, I'm going to give another example out on this Antifa situation. So, Antifa, these little wannabe Antifa, I should say, they like to use Twitter for their narrative. And that's not hard to understand because Dorsey created the snitch line, the pipeline of information, if you will. Now, the way Twitter's set up, it can go both ways, but... It also gives them realm for free communication. So they censor uh, everything conservative. But see, these terrorist groups, they fall underneath uh, the way they name themselves. is collective or uh, grow orders like co-ops, uh, food co-ops, or uh, anything like that is really what you're going to see them communicating on. Okay, It's going to be like some type of community uh, organization type of thing. Often they'll use nature, or they'll use community outreach, or um, things like that. Um, and once you start looking at them, they like to communicate. And I'm going to attach to the video. First, I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, one of the most notorious Antifa members online, he uh, posted, please do not tweet out your um, um, handle right before the event happened with the Christians where they attacked them. These conservatives will march over there and defend these Christians. Do not, basically, is what he was talking about. He doesn't say Christians because he doesn't want to get implicated. Um, they're big on that. But 
that's what he was referring to. They, he knew what was going on. He was saying, do not tweet your location because the conservatives are looking and they will descend on you. So they didn't want any flashback. They wanted to take on the easy targets. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically what they're trying to do. Don't forget what I said earlier. Biblically standing, a man has a right to defend his family, defend himself, and defend his community, and defend his country. That's biblical. Never forget that. They don't want you to they don't want you to see that because they're always focused on the love gospel and the peace and everybody love each other. Peace and love, man. Do what you want because you'll be forgiven. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. I'm sorry to say it. Um a lot of people think that if you go to church on Sunday, you just go to church on Sunday, you're all good. You know, if you're only being a Christian on a Sunday, that's not how it works. And if you're just going through your life ashamed of your faith, you mean you're not speaking out about your faith and issues that doesn't align with your faith, meeting in your community, that's not biblical either. Um, you're supposed to actually defend biblical aspects and you're supposed to defend your stances, both in your community and spiritually. Um, and you're supposed to do that with passion and with fire. A lot of times you don't see that. And they don't want they don't want people to know that it seems like. But no, that's the truth of it if you're being honest. And if you're really being honest about it, being a Christian is something you do seven days a week. And nobody, I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're a mega preacher. I don't care if they're a seasoned preacher of over 30-something years at the same church. I don't care. Nobody is perfect, and every single man and woman on the face of the earth sins, and that's the reason why we're supposed to pray the Lord's Prayer. That's the reason why we're supposed to pray for forgiveness daily. It says daily. It doesn't say on Sundays. It says pray for forgiveness nightly, daily, and practice repentance. Even Paul himself, one of the most prominent disciples, ran to the face of G or to the feet of Jesus at his feet and said, I am not worthy because I couldn't do the same thing. See, nobody is perfect and everybody is going to fall short of sin. That's the whole reason why Jesus was brought here. See, that was the cornerstone of our faith. And that's what they're trying to take away from our faith. If you see the, um, if you see the, um, line the division line that they're using what are they using they're using old world doctrine that really if you're a true christian you shouldn't be paying too much attention to yeah it might be an interesting read if you're a theology student or if you're studying to become a pastor or something it might be an interesting read but never put too much store into it for doesn't the bible say he is the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega for he knows everything right so, being the fact that Revelation is the last book, I like to say this about the lost books, okay? And I know I'm going to get slack for this, even from people I know. Because a lot of people I know are very highly educated in theology and very highly educated in history and politics. So, I know they're not going to like this. But flat out, I mean, that's just that's just the truth. Everybody sins daily, okay? And if you can't admit that, you're falling short. I know one thing. I wouldn't want to go to bed at night and accidentally take my last breath and just go by the gumption I went to church on Sunday. There's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of wickedness at play. And I'm talking about within the politics. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're a Satanist. I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a cultist. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you believe, if you're, or if you don't. If you're, you know, whatever, whatever faith you are, you got to admit. This is a little extreme what we're seeing. When you have a state-funded musical organization... 
literally saying, if you thought that our viewpoints and politics are coming for your children, in this case, you're right, and laugh about it and get away with it. If you can have a Department of Health person, United States Department of Health, literally wear dresses. This isn't about a sexual preference. This is about a political stance with the world. Let's say somebody like Putin himself is watching um, CNN or Fox News, right? And this person comes out dressed like this, or one of our politicians is going extreme radical and doing this foolishness, right? They're going to laugh and they're going to call us weak. And after so long, they're going to try us. You know, a lot of talk about this disease has happened. Like, is it from Wuhan? Is it a military agent? Is it a chemical agent? Is it a natural virus? Um, was it developed in a lab? Was it not? I say it's irrelevant. It came from where it came from. It came from China. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It came from China. China responded aggressively towards the rest of the world about it. And yet, they want to call you wrong for saying that too. It's kind of foolish and funny when you think about it because Biden recently came out not too long ago and said, you know what? On top of opening up the border, the United States completely on the south, we're going to let all the, all the Cubans finally come in because now I look good now that I got a rapper, you know, translating for me. Um, he said... I'm going to let all the Chinese from uh, Hong Kong come over too. This is literally opening up our borders and letting the whole world just walk on in. And you got to ask yourself something. The way the world economy looks, and I know that the schools aren't really teaching that right of economics right now, and it shows. When you listen to these people being interviewed, it shows that they're not. It's impossible that they are for these people to be in college level educated students being interviewed and to not know this basic stuff. It is impossible. Yes, we have a Department of Treasury and we do have a mint and we do have resources and we do have minerals. Yes, we do. Do you understand how the population works and how influx works, right? They cannot print money and keep printing it up. After so long, your dollar will be worth like a couple cents and be worthless to the point to where somebody in Venezuela's money will be worth more than the American dollar that's in your pocket. Okay, so let me let me translate that to you. You could have a whole wad in an image on on an image on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, right? Holding out all these rolls because you got this check from the government. You can have all these rolls of hundreds, right? Making yourself look all good like you're balling. When the actuality is, every single time they do that, the dollar decreases rapidly. As a matter of fact, Biden's financial plan right now is costing us past $8.5 billion. Okay? Understand that. And it's growing rapidly. It's like they're purposely trying to decrease the dollar. But why would they do that? Why would they do that? They would do it because part of the global reset plan that you're hearing coming out of Canada and other countries in Europe that are pushing it is calling for a one world type of electronic currency. <coughs> Hold that thought. Hold on. Now, I don't want to hear no conspiracy theories about the mark. I'm going to explain why. Back when the RFIC BIC chip first was implanted on our cards, you had a lot of people saying that's the mark of the beast. They're trying to force us to do whatever, right? I just flat out didn't like the banks trying to force us to do something. Eventually, I had to, too. Now, understand, this new form, though, is going to be like every country will have their own like name of currency, but it's a universal system of currency is what it is, really. It's a system. So 
although yours would be named something different, the value of it, I believe, will be relatively the same. And your trades and minerals and stuff will be higher, is what they're going for. And that's why you're seeing such a big push on global warming and depopulation, like the human population increasing. You're hearing a lot of uh, push from the youth right now talking about they don't want to have children and contribute to the human race. They just want to have friends with benefits or have a partner that they can feel comfortable with every single day. But they don't really want much more than that. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why you're seeing so many the rise of the LGBT community and the rise of drugs use. And when I say the rise of drug use, I'm not trying to say like the D.A.R.E. program back in the 80s, but I'm trying to say that the data is really outstanding when you look at it. I mean, when you look at Portland and you look at California, they're leading the world right now in, uh, sorry, another spider or something. Uh, but they're leading the world right now in um, drug overdose rates because they've legalized everything or made it misdemeanors, like a slap on a wrist. When a, when a state could literally do the stuff that they're doing, that's why I'm saying that Washington, for the past couple of years, I've been saying Washington, the state of Washington, is a trial state for all these socialist and global reset agendas they want Americans to do. It's, a, it's their experimental state because they were the first state to literally pass a law that said Children can receive vaccines and other medical treatment now without parental consent at the school. That's called indoctrination and lack of parental rights, period. Medical tyranny, overreach, political overreach. In that case, state level, bordering federal. This is just basic, I'm just saying. So, you just add it up, and we all know what the true California is looking like right now. If you, if you were raised there, or um, you know people there who are honest, we all know what California and uh, Washington looks like right now in New York. Y'all could try to hide it on a big media, but we know it. We know the truth. And I can honestly say, sitting out here, listening to these uh, frogs go off and the birds and everything else, I don't want it to look like New York City. I don't want it to look like Detroit. I don't want it to look like California and Washington. And I don't care what they think either. See, there's a thing about these people that come out here, and I can say because I was raised there. Um, a lot of people from these places really do have this mind state like, my opinion, you should, you should value my opinion more than whatever else you think because of where I'm from. No, 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 no. See, I left out there because of how people like you think. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I came back out to... To out here to where, yeah, granted, I might live in a small city. I could drive 10 minutes down here to the back of me, and I could be in the country. And for that matter, if I walk out to my driveway and look out this way, it ain't too far off. You can see the Osage Reservation line, and you can see nothing but fields. So that's the kind of environment I like. I don't want it to look like a bunch of apartments everywhere. And I know, I know people in Alabama. I know people in Arkansas, uh, Tennessee. Um, you know, all these other states other than Kansas, because Kansas is for the majority flipped blue. Um, they don't want it to resemble that. That's the reason why they like it out here. If they did like it, they would have probably left already, you know, and went out there. But see, y'all can't even handle your own stuff. And that's why your citizens are running out here. See, there's a book called The Grapes of Wrath. You should check it out sometime. It's a good book. Um. In that book, you find out about the Dust Bowl and how back in the day, California was really settled by people in Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl because, I mean, it was so bad that you could literally just see tan going across in the sky. Like, the sky looked like it was oranges colored from the amount of dirt. So they traveled out west to get away from it, and that's the real settlement in California. Before then, California was mainly Hispanic, or not Hispanic, Mexican, 
uh, Native American and Spanish, Asian, you know what I mean, uh, before that. You get what I'm saying? And the result of their politics getting so extreme in these states, they're seeing one of the biggest exoduses out of the East Coast and the West Coast in United States history. It's almost like the reverse Dust Bowl. Like they're leaving in droves to come back home to the open country. Do you get that? Now, granted, there is a problem with them trying to change wherever they settle at, but you got to deal with that when it comes. The way I look at it. But neither here nor there. I'm trying to lose track of what I was trying to say real quick. Um, I'm going to attach those videos to it because I feel it's detrimental for people to understand how Antifa communicates. I want them to understand. That's why I said how their handles work, how they communicate. Because let me tell you something. Anywhere they're going to be at, BLM is the same way. Anywhere they're going to be at, anywhere, it's going to go on Twitter before it goes anywhere else. Anywhere. Because that's where they got free roam. Jack Dorsey gave them a free roam pass to basically talk about whatever they want. Honest, honestly, when all the chaos pursued in Paris and the UK, you could go back and look at Twitter feeds and literally see them communicating with people overseas going, if you want to take over the police department, this is how you do it. If you want to light a police squad car on fire, this is how you do it. If you want to cause mass chaos, this is how you do it in real time, like communicating with them. That shows an international effort. So at this point, and it was a while back, Antifa became a global terrorist group to me. They are no longer a domestic funded, democratic domestic funded terrorist group. They are an international terrorist group and they should be treated as such. To me, they are the, the domestic version of ISIS. Literally. No difference to me. All they do is cause chaos and confusion. Most of them don't even realize what they're marching for. Most of them are doing it basically to get free stuff. And a lot of them just flat out like to fight. These are people that are mixed up of pedophiles, criminals, true anarchists, social justice warriors, LGBT, basically anything and everything goes type of people. The result of that is a lot of criminals have infiltrated them. And it's literally a come up day for them, man. That's all it is, a chance for them to act out. And some people, there's some people out there that just like to fight, man. It's a fact. There's some people out there that just like to do it, you know? Whatever reasons they have, little man syndrome. Um, they were bullied in school. Um, whatever the situation may be that happened in their lives, they're part of them too. And that's what they do. So another thing they like to do is they like to find out where you frequent. This means work, attend school, church, uh, community functions, um, everything. Everywhere you go. If you're one of their targets, that's what they like to do. And what they like to do is cause a scene in public. Because a while back, if you recall, what is it that AOC and all these other extremist ones are saying? Dox the conservatives. Dox the Christians. Find out where they work at. Find out what they do. Make their lives hell. Well... That's what the fuck they're doing. Pardon my French. I'm trying not to curse anymore. I really am. But that's what they're doing. They're literally doing what they said for them to do. These people will show up at your church. They will show up at your job. They will show up at the anywhere. I mean, stores, uh, parking lots, your coffee shop, bar, um, dispensary, anywhere. Anywhere that's public. Public. Because... They want you to be painted out as the crazy conservative. They want you to look like the extremist that the Democratic Party has painted out to be. So the Democratic Party has painted out this image of Christians and conservatives being anti-vaxxers, anti-maxxers, extremists, Trump, uh, Trump loyalists, violent, confrontational, and... That's what they like to do. So normally what they do is they have a female start mouthing off first.
because the other thing they want to do is make the conservative person or the Christian look like they're going to go off on a female. Why is that? Because then that gives them justification to go off, right? And that's why you'll see only the dudes in the background. The dudes will descend quite, uh, quite frequently, but make no mistake about it. To me, it's funny because he, Me Too and BLM was started by a bunch of old, bitter feminists that were part of the LGBT community. So they like to keep men around to enforce. They need the muscle. They want the muscle that, you know, go after somebody in groups. They, they, they need that muscle, you know. So they don't really care about them. They just utilize them. They're kind of like puppets, you know. March over here. Go give me that. Go do that. Kind of like the little puppets, if you will. So that's what they're doing. You know what I mean? And that's one of their favorite tactics. Now, and once they get it, they'll film it and they'll post it everywhere so they can dox you. See, I told you he was crazy. See, I told you he was this. I told you he was a lunatic. That's what they're trying to do, man. It's hysterical because they think it's going to work. You know what I mean? Honestly, they really do think these tactics are going to work. But the reason why they think it's going to work is because the Democratic Party literally has funded them and allowed these tactics to work. The two are tied tied together. So when it comes down to these groups, look for teacher unions, donation funds, charity groups, follow the money. It's gonna be some type of community program. Here's why. Tax write-offs, first off. Democrats love to make money secretly. They love to line their pockets. So tax write-offs. Everything that you donate can be a tax write-off. And every single type of volunteer thing has a potential to be a tax write-off. That's why they love it so much. So they also love to use community volunteer type of programs, co-op type of programs like, you know, food pantries, shelter programs, homeless programs, um, drug outreach programs, community counseling, uh, school PTA groups, um, they love it. They love it. And that's their undercover Gaius. They love they love the Gaius of wearing a mask. But if you really want to be honest, that's how you're going to start finding out who they are. And if you really want truth, I mean, yeah, they hate on them all you want to. But Andy now has done a great job at documenting them. There's countless now. They're trying to wipe them all away, but too many people have them. I personally know people overseas that have them. Too many people have them. But they're trying to wipe out all their arrest records. But the truth is, they're already out there. And yeah, you can see, they're teachers, they're professors, they're counselors, they're, you're, they're the people that mold your children. They're like your nurses and doctors. And Well, I didn't really see too many doctors. I think I saw one. But they're your psychologists and counselors, uh, lawyers and, you know, social workers and all those type of people. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting too because whenever you watch like if you study cold war tactics and you see shows like about the cold war there was one on amc i'm trying to remember the name of it uh, somebody if you can comment later and let me know um because i can't remember and it was on it was fairly new too but it was fairly good really good and it's about a couple that was russian that was sent to u.s they were spies but they were sent to the U.S. with children that were already trained to be their children and be uh, assembled into American life the best they can, complete with a front business that was a tourist organization. See, that's the other thing they love. Um, cheap stores like Metro PCS. <coughs> perfect, <coughs> perfect example. Stores like Metro PCS. That's a perfect example. All this could be verified. So, my intentions was to show you guys why they go after religious organizations, and I did that. That's literally why, why they do it. But I also showed you how they're funded. I've done this numerous times on this show. I've talked to numerous people, uh, people about it. It's not hard to figure out if you really want to, but no, they are not dead. They are very active still. In fact, in fact, I am almost willing to bet money on it because... A half a year ago on Twitter on their co-ops and stuff like that they say we're coming out to the Midwest and we're coming out to the south and we're gonna light it up on fire just like we did on the West Coast right we're gonna burn it down so how would they do that right they got criminal records and a lot of them got all this but how would they do that 
the best way for them to do that is to move to the Midwest and South and do what? Have their children go to the schools and do, them do what? Assemble into the community life. So what they're doing is they're relocating to places like Texas, Oklahoma, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and all these other places. And I don't know how long they're going to wait before they do it. But what they're doing is they're assembling into local life to get these positions that they need to make everything work the way it did out there. And they're trying to assemble into every type of position of life they can in the community because they need to gain loyalty. They need local loyalty. So the first thing they're going to do is they're going to reach out to the community people and they're going to start slightly chirping in their ear about different stuff and chirping at this and chirping at that. And they're going to try to get into your retail stores. They're going to try to get into your, um, I wouldn't go so far as churches, but maybe, um, they try to go into like stores like cell phone stores and retail stores. They try to get into like, if they have degrees, they'll get into positions where those degrees are in your community. And they're going to, they're going to wait around for a while and chill out and, before they do everything. And then they're gonna start their little whatever. If they're still gonna go through with it, that's how they're gonna do it. But keep in mind, they have to assemble first. And to assemble, that means a great majority of people in your area have to flip, right? But how would they flip? Again, that's why I say it's an overtime thing. Don't think this is something that is just like an isolated thing. These people are crazy and they're stupid, but they're, I mean, well, you don't wanna say they're stupid because most of them are stupid. I don't know. They're organized chaos, I guess, is the best way to really describe them. You know what I mean? They're organized, funded chaos. That's what they are. So that's also brings me to another thing, by the way. Real quick, uh, the election, right? Um, 2024, expect a red wave because, well, here's the problem with this. You've been hearing me say red wave 2024, red wave 2024, red wave 2024, right? But more and more you're seeing planes coming into private airports. Uh, they love private airports, man. But they're going into private airports and uh, private airports and military airports. And you see these planes unloading illegal immigrants and they're going to Tennessee. There's whistleblowers that have literally taken pictures of them. They're going to Kansas. They're going to Arkansas. There's pictures of them there. You know what I mean? So the, what they're doing is, and they're told to report for vaccine, but they say it's like 10% of them do. So what they're doing is they're going into the local environment and either going to spread whatever they have, or they're going to assemble into the life and they're told to vote blue. So now they can flip all these states blue. Ultimately, what they want is to see all of America blue. It ain't going to happen. Not truthfully, anyways. This is why I think that if nothing happens on 2024, that's going to be a bad day. Because that means that their plan is actually working. And the only way to stop them is real, true patriot militias that is willing to actually do it. And that would be intelligent people, not stupid backwooded people. Intelligent, military operative trained people. Uh, that would be the only hope at that point. And I'm just being honest. So that's why you see a lot of people like myself, we're pushing more on our faith right now than we ever had before because we see what's coming. But I only have 10 minutes left, so I'm not gonna go that far into it. But to a good friend of mine, I got news for you. God is not dead. In fact, right now, globally, you are seeing one of the largest revivals globally going on. There are people in countries that you never thought that you would hear God's name ever uttered or Jesus literally going out into the middle of the streets in groups, dropping to their knees and praying for forgiveness in droves. You're seeing one of the biggest revivals globally, and you've been seeing it now <coughs> for the past couple years. Now, once all this stuff actually starts going more extreme that I've been talking about, and it will, it's going to get way worse before it gets better, buddy. Way worse. That's why I make jokes all the time. You know, the show's just getting good. 
because I don't think that I, I think it's going to have to before before things like what I've been saying happens. Um, and then when it does, I think you're going to see one of the biggest revivals in America. In fact, you're already starting to see a huge one. The uh, Christians are coming back home. They're coming back to their churches. They're filling pews again. And they're doing it all across America. People are doing it in the middle of the beach now. Street preaching is coming back. Everywhere. You guys could try to attack them and arrest them in your liberal cities, but we all know they're there. And they're doing God's work. And they're growing. Street preaching is actually getting really popular again. So I wouldn't say God is dead. In fact, I would say he's actually quite alive. And he's starting to work overtime, and that's just a fact. Now, yeah, society itself. Society might be... Uh, society might be pushing all these... Society might be pushing all these perverse LGBT, trans... Um, and drugs and more violence and ex more you know i don't even know how to put it man just more perversion all the way around you know more self-indulgence they could try to push that all they want to and they could try to paint it out like every single american is on board of that and that's what they're really doing with the media truth be told they're trying to get onto your media and they're trying to say hey all of america is like this and look we're showing you all these groups that's literally saying what we're saying. But what they're showing you is their little Democratic ran areas. They're not showing you the true communities of the South and the Midwest. And they're not showing you the true backwooded communities of New York. Hey, I got news for you, New York. Things are changing up there, aren't they? And I'm talking about for the locals. They don't want to admit it yet, but they see it. Things are changing up there. People are waking up again. In fact, I'm talking about there's small rural communities in New York people often forget about, you know, and they're all starting to flip back red because nobody wants socialism. Most people that come from third world nations have experienced communism and socialism, and they're not going to go for it. So once what they're doing is truthfully, this is my hope. Majority of the migrants. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. The Democrats could try to get away with getting them here all they want to. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. They are. It's not, it's not a question of if they're going to do it. Man, they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? They're already doing it. So, And who knows how long they've been doing it for. So it's not a question of if. They're already doing it. But here's my hope. These people have been through real socialism and real communism. And guess what? They're not going to go for this socialism Marxist agenda that you're going for. They might tell you they are. But my hopes are they're going to get assimilated into it and fall like everybody else are. In fact... I think a lot of them actually are. I've talked to a couple of them. Not like my recent migrants, but in my lifetime, I've talked to a couple of people that I know are from other countries that feel the same way I do. So it's not what you think it is. It's like a big, huge picture show that they're trying to paint out through Hollywood and the liberal news stations, you know, and liberal college scientists. Um, they want you to believe all this stuff is happening in droves and that it's just the new normal to do. It's not. You know what? True, old-fashioned lifestyles actually starting to come back. And I actually find it humorous because it's human nature, really. It's psychology 101. Truth be told, it's psychology 101. Because it, people have a unique sense of wanting to do bad things. So, when they said, don't do traditional marriage, it's bad for you. Guess what? A lot of people started looking into it. And a lot of people are starting to like it again. It, it's slowly starting to come back. They might be doing their own versions of it, but it's slowly starting to come back, man. Because nobody wants to be told what to do. You know what I mean? That's what they did not count on, with, I think, with all this the most. They just didn't... They did not count on everybody acting the way they did. And I don't see that growing smaller. In fact, I see it growing bigger. And I, and I, I truly think that is evident whenever you look at it, man. I really do. I think it's evident whenever you look at it. Um, so that's why I tell people, I think there's still hope for 2024. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, and honestly, I just don't know. I think there's so much stuff coming out that people don't know what to believe. So I say give it time. 
don't flip out on people just yet. People, some people have to process process them slower than other people. You know what I mean? So I think that over time we can see a shift. I really do. I've been saying it. Um, I keep saying you're starting to really see it. And yeah, they don't want to show you the big, huge revivals. And they don't want to show you all the true stuff that's going on, the good stuff that's going on. They don't want you to see that because that goes against their globalist their globalist agenda and their need to separate and cause division. Right now, you got to understand with children, children have a need. It's a well-documented, well-medically known fact. Children have a need to see the whole face. Once you take away this side of the face, it blocks so many of their reactions. It blocks so many of their reactions. And, and it's really bad for their brain. You get what I'm saying? They need that recognition. And that's what they're trying to take away. They're trying to take that away from children. And worse now, a lot of schools are saying that if you're not vaccinated, you have to wear a mask. And if you are vaccinated, then you don't have to wear a mask. I'm talking about before. I don't know about now, but I'll talk about before. So what is that going to do? In itself, it's going to cause a division line among the students. And you're going to cause fighting and chaos. It's like the Democrats know the only way for them to secede is to keep stealing, keep lying, and keep stoking that fire of hate. Because they're, they're definitely not stoking the fire of unity that Obama ran on years ago. In fact, whenever he can smile and chuckle about the New York Times and other groups trying to say, well, he's just more sophisticated and that's why it's okay for all these celebrities to, you know, not wear their mask and not follow through what they're telling you to do and telling you to make sure your children do. I don't care if you're a conservative. I'm talking to everybody, whether you're liberal or conservative. I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking about every single person that's working in a restaurant right now. I'm talking about every single person that's running a bus right now, driving a bus. Every single person that's a truck driver. Every single person that's just a regular, everyday working person. Why is it okay for these politicians and celebrities to tell you that you must do this and you must do that but they're more sophisticated than you so they don't have to do it only you because you're not that sophisticated fins me just thinking about if i voted for him you know what i mean wow but i'm that's a socialist for you and that's how it's played out that's another example of democratic socialism being played out in real time and so many people still don't see it. They're staying blind to it. And that's because people have been dumbed down and don't know true history anymore. People are screaming it out that do know it from the top of their lungs or have been and other people just stay numb to it because they don't want to admit it. And then you got a lot of people, let me say this real quick, okay? Let me say this real, real quick. And it's no offense to nobody. No offense to nobody. I have nothing but respect and honor for anybody that served in this country. I do. I truly do. And I get why so many of you are having a hard time admitting it. You know what I mean? And then I understand why so many are throwing in the towel too. You know what I'm saying? Why it's easy for them to just ignore the situation. They don't want to think about the situation. So they just ignore it. You know what I mean? See, I'm one of the loud speakers. Like, I'm one of the screamers, man. I always have been. I always will be. I'm the type of guy that if I find out somebody has a problem with me, I'm going to, and I bump into them, I'm going to ask them about it. Like, what's going on? What's the deal? Because I want to know. That's just how I am. I know a lot of other people, they just want to admit like this stuff isn't going on. And it is going on. And it's going, it is getting dangerous. It's flat out. They're saying it now. They're not even hiding it. They're not even hiding the fact they're socialists anymore. They're flat out yelling it, seeing if people are going to pay attention. And you know what? Instead of paying attention, 
they're still going with their Trump derangement syndrome, you know, their hatred. I don't even understand that one either. Trump has been gone for how long? You know what I mean? He's been gone forever, dude. And people are like still like fuming as if he's still making mean tweets. But he was blocked off of Twitter, so how can he be making mean tweets? But all you guys are like, oh, Trump, 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 Trump. How is it Trump's fault? Trump's been gone forever, dude. This is literally your administration's fault, and none of you guys want to own up to it. You know why you don't want to own up to it? Because nobody has self-accountability no more. That's why they don't want to own up to it. Nobody has self-accountability. Everybody's ashamed of self-accountability. It ain't me, it's this guy. It ain't me, it was this guy. Nobody wants them to have self-accountability no more, so it's easy for them to just blame Trump or blame the conservative or blame the Christian or it's just easier for them to do that because then they don't have to face the truth, that they're part of the problem. They voted for it. At the beginning of this, I said, literally, in my eyes, if I find out someone's Democratic, they don't have no room to complain. They voted for this. The only way they have, complain, have room to complain is if they're becoming active in trying to shut it down, exposing the truth and showing what they're doing. You know what I mean? Otherwise, they're supporting it. And they voted for it. You know? That's just how I look at it. It's kind of like back in the day when my grandfather used to say, if you didn't vote, you don't have no right to complain. Period. But folks, if you want to fix the problem, you're going to have to start with the Department of Education, okay? Understand, the Department of Education circulates the curriculum that is mandated to states to teach. Now, the states have their own Department of Education that can vote on what curriculum can be taught, what curriculum they want to teach their students there. Then you have PTAs that can, or which is parents, if they find out something they don't like, can go and fight on behalf of their, of their children against it because they don't like it. But for some reason, everybody focuses on the teachers. Understand that, yes, some of these teachers are very liberal. I've talked about it numerous times. But quite a great deal of them are literally teaching whatever they're told to teach. It's kind of like the military. Based on your rank, you know, you get told what to do. You don't question authority. You just, you just get told what to do. I think that was the number one reason why I couldn't make it into the military is I have a unique need to question things. You know, somebody could tell me, go do this because this is what you were hired to do, right? I want to know why I'm doing it, how it works, and all of that. You know what I mean? It's not enough for you just to go, this is, this is your rank, this is what you're told to do, go do it. No, I want to know why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's probably why I didn't make it into it. You know what I mean? Because they're, that's literally the way it is. And a lot of teachers are the same way. They fall in the line to have their job. With that said, yes, there has been quite a number, high number of them. Sorry, the mosquitoes are biting me up out here today. Um, high number of them, though, that are fighting back now. There's a lot of them that are speaking out. You, need, you guys need to do your research and seek it out because a lot of them are uh, speaking out against it. But everybody, I got to go. This is just a reaction video. So this has been Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody take care and have a good night. By the way, once again, if you're a Christian or if you're conservative, don't be afraid to voice your opinion and don't be afraid to talk about your faith. I ask myself often, remember those WWJD bracelets? What would Jesus do? I know one thing. He definitely wouldn't be ashamed to voice his opinion if he disagreed with something. Because he stood for what he believed in. And he stood by what he believed in. Point blank. Once again, Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody take care.